to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide Buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Hey everybody, so the intention of adipotide is highlighted in its very name. The MD Anderson Cancer Group dedicated to treatment and eradication of cancer based out of the University of Texas designed a drug called adipotide, a synthetic peptide that is intended to cut off the blood supply feeding fat cells, thereby killing adipocytes. An anti-obesity drug that homes in on and destroys blood vessels that support fat reduced the weight of obese rhesus monkeys by 11% in one month. It also trimmed the waistlines by eradicating 27% of their abdominal fat. Obesity raises a person's risk for developing breast, ovarian, prostate, colon, and other cancers, and also hinders treatment for cancer patients. Clearly, the effects of obesity are multifaceted. Not only does obesity lend itself to increased cancer risk, but it also can serve as a detriment to treatment. Adipotide is formally known as prohibitin targeting peptide 1, or PTP1, or even as FTPP, fat-targeting apoptotic peptide, that describes its goal of triggering programmed cell death in adipocytes or fat cells. This is what makes it a pro-apoptotic drug. And so what guided the creation of this peptide is the idea that adipose tissue mass can be directly influenced via its blood supply. We cut off the source, we kill the target. Same idea. And thus, initial studies in mice appeared to show a 30% weight reduction over four weeks through its proposed ability to target the vasculature supplying white fat cells via what's called a ligand-directed mechanism. These findings were in a way replicated in monkeys. Not only did these rhesus monkeys exhibit weight loss, but they also showed improvement in insulin sensitivity. It also appeared to be generally well tolerated in these non-human primates, albeit there is some notable side effects, including, and in most particular to mild, generally reversible nephrotoxicity, so negative effects at the level of the kidneys. So it's important to note that when this study in primates was conducted, researchers didn't quite fully know how the peptide worked. For instance, would we expect transient increases in lipid levels and triglycerides? Are lipids eliminated from the stool? What would the effects be on appetite? Are there additional side effects to be present predominantly in humans? And the goal was to find out. All things to be considered, and clearly, this was a heavily invested in product. So why were clinical trials ultimately and abruptly discontinued? Research on adipotide came to a quick halt in 2019, after a clinical study to be done in patients with metastatic prostate cancer and obesity was terminated by the PI, or principal investigator, stopped in the first phase of human clinical evaluation after having initially taken over popular media in 2011 and 2012. And despite my best attempts at detective-like research digging, the reasons for why the clinical trial was discontinued is popularly unspecified. However, thought to be due at least in part to safety concerns. My guess is the almost predictable renal injury, which would likely greatly affect the target patient population. People who suffer from obesity, as we know, are especially predisposed to type 2 diabetes, which is a leading cause of kidney disease. And diabetic nephropathy is modulated through hyperglycemia affecting the blood vessels of the kidneys, reducing their function. So we've got an especially predisposed population already at a high risk for kidney detriment taking a drug that, according to preliminary data, would not be unlikely to push their kidneys over the edge in a way. I would imagine the researchers, despite some of the promise in fat loss, which may even be reversible upon cessation of the product, did a risk-benefit analysis and found the risk to outweigh the promise. So this is the pathway that took adipotide from GLP-1-like hype in the early 2010s to pretty popularly undiscussed after 2019. The precise reasons why are and will likely remain up in the air. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are looking for a way to further support 
the channel. The details to the Patreon will be in the description below. I do encourage you to like and subscribe if you do enjoy peptide evidence-based content. It's the best way to help me out. Most importantly, I hope you have a great day. Take care. Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy.